Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is QAH here. I'm good. Of course. We are doing Yaylin Story Quest. Uh, go check out my Archon Quest videos. I was supposed to have a new video out today, but it got copyright claimed, so. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working through that, so. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's jump into the game. Sorry, boys. Another. Very I was supposed to record this yesterday, but uh, my entire computer and Gacha Impact had an update. So. It literally started the this, story this quest for me. Okay. okay. I don't get it. I got snacks. Food. Traveler. Hi, Mon. <laughs> it's been a long time. Oh, hey, Hoisin. Long time to see. Fancy meeting you here. How's work these days? Thanks to the help of people like you and colleagues like Ganyu, better all the time. That was where I did teleport here yesterday and it would not let me start the Archon, I mean, the story quest. I literally ran towards Madame Ping and then it got choppy and then I log off. Then I logged back in, walked around Lear and it still didn't let me start the story quest. So after I updated now I can teleport and start the story quest. Okay. But I've been feeling distracted at work lately. I just feel constantly agitated. <sighs> it's a long story. But my father, he's thinking of stepping down from the Tianshu position due to health issues. Nothing specifically. He's not unwell. He says he's just increasingly low on energy these days. He's always said, old age comes for us all in the end. Still, I just can't help but feel a little emotional watching it happen to him. Anyway, my father's currently on the second floor of Yangcheng Tea House. Why don't you come pay him a visit with me? He seems very fond of you too. I'm sure chatting with you will make him very happy. Sure, let's go! To the second floor of the uh, Hashi... Uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, let's just go. <laughs> What a lovely surprise. Welcome. Hoishi, why don't you go downstairs and get the shopkeeper to make us a fresh pot of tea? I heard that you've been traveling all over the place recently. I would very much like to hear your adventure story. Hoishin told you, didn't she? Don't worry, I'm quite alright. It's just the years gradually catching up with me. Uh, as I grow older, I'm starting to find that with many things, though the mind is willing, the flesh is weak. Especially recently, I've noticed a rather drastic drop in my energy levels. I am still very much in good standing as the Tianshu today. Nevertheless, I wish to pass on the position 
before my mental acuity begins to decline beyond redemption. How difficult is it to transfer the Tianxu position? Oh, well, you see, the Tianxu is a rather unique position among the Liu Wei Qixing. Historically speaking, the Tianxu rarely appears in public. We stay behind the scenes, planning and giving advice. So a public selection process would not be suitable. We also want to keep any prospective Tianxu candidates free from influence by outside forces. So we tend to be as discreet as possible in their assessment and appointment. For these reasons, the incumbent Tianxu typically recommends their candidate of choice, and this is then approved by the other Qixing members. So in other words, you pick someone, and then Lady Kuching, Lady Ningguang, and the other Qixing appoint them? Correct. Unfortunately, due to my health, I won't be able to assess every candidate myself. Not to despair, however, because I found someone exceptionally capable to act on my behalf as assessment officer. <laughs> In fact, I believe you recently became acquainted with her yourself. Oh? Who is it? I'm heartbroken. I thought it might take you a little longer than this to forget all about me. It's Yaron! Jackpot. Uncle Tian here asked me to assess three candidates for him. Why she glitch up the steps? I see that. <laughs> Fancy joining me? You'll be among the first to get to know the next Tian Shu. Might be a good opportunity for you. Hmm. What do you think? Paimon thinks so too. It can't be a bad thing to be on good terms with a new Qixing, right? All right, then. Though, I gotta say, Uncle Tian, you say you're into behind-the-scenes planning? My work's of the covert variety, too. Don't you think I might make a good Tian Shu? Huh? Yelan, you want to be the next Tian Shu? Hmm, I'm not opposed to the idea. But I suspect Ningguang wouldn't let you go very easily after how long you've been working together. So, how about this? If your investigation reveals that none of the other candidates are qualified for the position, I'll recommend you for the job. Deal. Well, you guys take your time. Everything's all set for the assessments to go ahead. Meet me on the first floor when you're ready. Until then, have a pleasant conversation. Oh, and no need to pay for your tea. As the new owner of this fine establishment, this runs on the house. You're all set? Uncle Tian seems really worn down. It's like all his energy's gone. Yeah, it may sound harsh, but Uncle Tian is past his prime. He's not cut out for this anymore. So he's recommended three candidates. Their names are Qin Wei, Ming Bo, and Zhe Yi. Qin Wei is a wealthy entrepreneur. Ming Bo works at the Liu Wei Ministry of Civil Affairs, and Zhe Yi is focused on study and travel. Try to keep all that in mind. <laughs> of course, it doesn't really matter if you forget, since we'll be assessing them at Yue High Pavilion in a short while. Qin Wei, Ming Bo, Zhe Yi. Paimon should be able to remember their names, but what does the assessment involve exactly? Let's leave that until we get to Yuahai Pavilion. Alright. Heads in the game, people. The stakes don't get much higher than a change in the Qixing. We can't afford to miss anything, no matter how small. Got it. We'll keep our eyes wide open! <laughs> Alright, bet. I got a text message. Alright, bet. Where are we going? Uh, I'm teleport here, then fly into the next cutscene.
Yep. My legs are getting sore. What is wrong with this assessment officer? This is a huge occasion and I don't even get a chair. I've dealt with all kinds of people in my time, but never have I been made to stand while I'm waiting for an appointment. Oh, I mean, uh, I, I think it's fine. That's called being complacent. If you're happy to just accept the way things are, you'll never be able to change anything in the future. Oh, come on. That's just... Now you're just... being unreasonable. All right, you two. Let's not get into a big argument over this. It's not worth it. Qianwei, that was a bit uncalled for. And Mingbo cut him some slack. We've all been standing around for a while. It's natural to be getting irritable. Look, how about this? There's no rule saying we're obliged to stand up while we wait, so why don't we borrow some chairs from the guild nearby? Fine. Ugh, they're not the best quality chairs, to be sure. But under the circumstances, it would be better than nothing. It looks like all three candidates have arrived. Mm-hmm. We'll meet them formally soon. Before that, let me run you through the assessment process. I've split it into two stages. Current affairs and planning, and face-to-face -face interview. In the first stage, candidates are required to submit a manifesto for Liyue's development. In the second stage, we will ask them some questions in person. Writing a manifesto takes time, so I informed them of this requirement in advance. These are the reports they submitted. Wow! One of them is really thick! It's also worth mentioning a stipulation I gave them. Whoever is appointed as the new Tianshu will be expected to implement their plan as put forward in their manifesto. Failing the occurrence of some cataclysmic event, they will not be permitted to change their plan. Therefore, these three piles of documents in front of us represent where each candidate stands on key policy issues. There's still some time. Have a skim through, get a first impression of what each person's proposing. I'll be waiting off to the side. Just let me know when you're done. The way Raiden Shogun just finished dying. <laughs> the way she just finished dying. Do you need a hand with anything? Hoisin is taking some time off at the moment. I'm covering for her. Just let me know if you need anything. She didn't. She didn't count. She didn't the kids. Kind of Uh, Z. Okay. Z's manifesto covers domestic affairs, foreign affairs, and checks and balances all in great detail. The focus seems to be problem solving. It provides constant, I might have mispronounced the word, and clear solutions to various problems. It's so thick that you can have time to skim through it roughly. No, it's so thick you don't you're not really going to comprehend what's in the stack of those papers. Q's manifesto addresses many commercial issues and provides some very cantering analysis. His view seems to be that regulations and incentives are both indisputable. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce these names, but M's manifesto covers domestic affairs quite comprehensively, focuses 
focusing on people's livelihoods. The core principle seems to be the greater good means a world that works for everyone. Check on the three people with you. Yin Lin. Finished, huh? What did you think? Everyone took it very seriously. Of course they did. They have the chance to be picked as the new Tian Shu, so you can bet they're putting their best foot forward. And keep in mind, whoever gets in has to execute their plan as written. Nobody wants to have any regrets. I'm mad that most of the time we let Karamon Plus do most of the talking, and half the time she can't even comprehend as good as the Traveler. But yet, the Traveler is keeping her voice sacred because of her brother. <laughs> That's for me to know and you to find out. We can talk more after the interviews. We'll see the candidates now. Let's do one at a time. Start with Chen Wei. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so you two are the assessment officers, are you? I had assumed that given the great import of this situation, Lady Ningguang would perhaps be assessing us in person. I certainly hadn't imagined I'd be seeing two entirely unfamiliar faces. Sir, please respect me as if Ningwa is here as well. We did not come all the way here for your attitude. I trust you've read through my manifesto? I'd be more than happy to clarify any details you found difficult to grasp. It was written with an expert audience in mind, after all. Mind your tone, mister! Relax. It wasn't intended as a personal slight against anyone in particular. I was simply stating a fact. Cloud Retainer? You know this Adeptus? Oh, yes, I remember now. You must be the traveler that people are constantly talking about. With your sterling reputation, you must have a respectable level of erudition. Perhaps you will be able to understand the concepts I have put forward. Yeah, although I shouldn't get my hopes up. Oh, is it my turn? Yes. Please, introduce yourself. I'm, uh, Mingbo. I work in the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I've worked there for, um, nine years, five months, and three days. In that time, I've handled, uh, 2,347 cases. The way people can keep count like this is impressive. Like, I can only tell you years and some change. That's all I can say. I can never tell you the days, minutes, times, millimeter, seconds of... Knowing this, that, and the third, unless it's my age. Other than that, I know. <laughs> I have 12 active cases at the moment. They should be concluded in uh, 16 days. My current work is related to urban planning, and I'm also responsible for uh, auditing the accounts. To be more precise, there are three parts to the accounts, namely... Uh, is it just Pinon, or is he not? Very good at public speaking. Leave him alone. You know what? Let's leave the self-introduction there and move on to some questions. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little nervous. What would you like to know? You're here to assess me, so ask away, and I'll answer your questions to the best of my ability. Your manifesto is very wide in its scope, but you don't seem to be personally involved in many of the specific fields. How can you be sure that you have the ability to put your plan into action? No, that's not being blunt. That's being... Oh, yeah, that is being blunt. But it's also being honest. It's just like, uh, you want the right person. Very fair question. I completely understand where you're coming from. But I'm confident in my plan. I've visited many different places, 
talked to lots of people with far more expertise than myself, and my manifesto is the conclusion of these efforts. Of course, two different problems can be interconnected in very complicated ways, and you might reach two very contradictory conclusions depending on which one you're focusing on. What I've tried to do is strike a balance. In other words, present an optimal solution to all the problems as a whole. How do you plan to determine whether you are right or wrong about your proposed solution being the optimal one? A great question. Well, I'd start by having my colleagues and the secretaries of the UAHI Pavilion evaluate any proposals before implementation. Post-implementation, it would all come down to the results. If it turned out that my judgment was to blame for poor results, I would take responsibility. Hmm. Nice answer. All right, next question. a great guy. Everything he said was thoughtful and logical, and he was just a pleasure to listen to. Hey, I like the second dude better. He was mad. He, he was on the mad side. Here's my take on what we just learned. As you saw, Chen Wei is highly knowledgeable. He proposes many excellent ideas in his manifesto, which effectively target the big issues. But he is very proud and incredibly stubborn. He doesn't care much about other people's feelings. Mingbo's plan is more thorough and more measured. You can tell he's meticulous in his work, very detail-oriented. But he and Chen Wei are otherwise polar opposites. Mingbo is not very articulate and comes across as very timid in conversation. Perfect summary! Paimon couldn't agree more! You're good at this, Yuan. Last but not least, Jur Yi. His manifesto is full of pertinent details, his methodology is sound, and his proposals cover a broad range of fields, which is quite a rare feat. The depth he goes into in each and every area means it can only be a product of painstaking work. Plus, he is modest and good at dealing with people. But what really interests me is that many of his views happen to coincide with Uncle Tian's, Having someone like Jur E take the position would certainly put Uncle Tian's mind at rest. Great! We'll see. Let's go back and report to Uncle Tian. See, then it's more or less as I anticipated. All right, then let me ask this. The ideas in Jury's manifesto are very similar to your own. Is there any particular reason behind this? Oh, I didn't want to say anything when I gave you the list of candidates, for fear of affecting your judgment. But I can tell you now, those three candidates have all studied under me in the past. It's only natural that they share some similarities with me. But Xian Wei went on to focus on his business, and Ming Guo has always been occupied with his work at the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Of all of them, Jerry was with me for the longest duration. Oh, so how did you get to know them all, Uncle Tian? Chen Wei was referred to me by an old friend. Ming Guo came to my attention in the course of my work. <laughs> As for Jerry, <laughs> I was pure happenstance. We first met while fishing. Gradually, as we got to know each other, we started discussing all sorts of topics. Jerry came from a poor family, and his parents died when he was very young. But he was a gifted student and a fast learner. He reminded me of a younger version of myself. So I started out giving him a few words of advice when we were out fishing and 
noticed how quickly he got on. Quite. And now, all of a sudden, he's grown into a mature young man. It's a joy to see. But it also gets one thinking. The young are growing up, and I am growing old. How time flies. No one can escape the cycle of life. I don't know, Uncle Tian. You still seem in pretty good shape to me. You might have another few years of work left in you, don't you think? Oh, you. <laughs> There's really no need to console me. Having less energy than I used to isn't a, such a bad thing. It, it just means I finally have a good reason to retire and spend my days doing what old men like me should be doing. Going fishing whenever I feel like it. Sounds like you sure love fishing, Uncle Tian. Ooh, there's nothing quite like fishing to pass the time. Ooh, and freshly caught fish? Ah, they make the most beautiful fish soup with barely any preparation required. Fresh fish soup. Mmm, sounds tasty. Doesn't it? <laughs> also, some time ago, Jury purchased a very special recipe from an old fisherman. When we've been fishing recently, Jury always brings some extra ingredients he prepared in advance. Oh, the addition of these makes the soup taste even more wonderful. That flavor makes for a fond memory. But at my age, who knows how many more chances I have left to taste it again. I love how the topic of discussion went from finding candidates to talking about food. Oh, can Paimon come next time too? Paimon really wants to try it. Let's get back to the matter at hand. Uncle Tian, we've reported back. Do you have a verdict? Mm-hmm. I appointed you as the assessment officer, and I trust your judgment. Had you not asked me why Jury's ideas were so similar to mine, I was not going to mention my history with any of them. This decision must be guided by what is fair and right. Please disregard all other considerations and make your final decision only after a thorough review of each candidate's talents and capabilities. Remember, you must be thorough. Understood. Come on. Let's go talk somewhere else. Bye-bye, Uncle Tian. Look after yourself. So, it's gonna be Jerry, right? His manifesto was written well, and he's the best speaker. Easy. Let's not rush. There's no time limit for this assessment. Huh? So, are you gonna give them more tests or something? No, nothing like that. The assessment itself is complete. But let me give you a word of advice. Things are not always as they appear. The biggest no-no in intelligence work is to only get information from the person of interest themselves. The truth is almost always hidden beneath many layers of deception. You have to get information through many different channels. For example... Wen Yuan, Shanghua. Yes? Lady Yelan, what are your orders? Ugh! Who are they? Where did they come from? Did they scare you? These two are Wen Yuan and Shanghua. They work for me. As my trusted assistants, they are always standing guard nearby. They also perform various assignments as required. Shanghua is a business expert who gets his information by trading. Wen Yuan relies on word of mouth. And there's also Wu Pei, who's not here right now. That meathead must have been out there on sea surveillance for some time now. Is he all right? I seem to remember that he can't swim. <sighs> Nothing can take that guy down. Certainly not a little wind and waves. 
Shenghua, visit all the commerce guilds and look into Qianwei's background. Wenyuan, go to the Ministry of Civil Affairs and look through Mingbo's work files. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, so what about Zhu Yi? Zhu Yi? Well, obviously, as the most promising candidate, we will be investigating him ourselves. Let's go to the docks first. Lots of people passing through there. You can find out all kinds of things. If we're looking for information, why don't we try talking to Wu Lai, the owner of Wanyu Boutique? He does business at the North Wharf. Maybe he has some news for us. Hmm. That's actually not a bad idea. Let's go and ask him. Huh. Shut <laughs> 